Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz. Now this is a video that is aimed at a rather limited audience, namely those who do the tournaments. The esports side of the game has, to be frank, evolved quite a lot quicker than I think Wargaming expected. And as such, Wargaming are generally playing catch-up. Now I'm not going to lie to you, the tour system and its rules relating to the esports side have uh, been lacking in numerous areas. Despite this, Wargaming have, to an extent, tried to address some issues surrounding the tours as in when they come up. One of the biggest issues involves the seeding system. Now, basically, the principle adopted by Wargaming has always been the strongest to weakest principle, which basically means that the strongest teams get seeded better. In other words, a team with, say, a 70% average win rate will generally face off against a team with, say, a 45% average win rate in the opening rounds of the Tour. The idea behind this is so that the best teams don't face off against each other too soon, thereby eliminating the better teams and making it easier later on. Now, this doesn't mean the better teams are given like preferential treatment, far from it. I mean, there is no guarantee they'll beat the lower ranked team. After all, you should never underestimate your enemy. With this principle in place, it became clear that a loophole, quite a big loophole, existed, whereby teams could manipulate the seeding by fielding players with 100% win rates. Now this seems perfectly acceptable, I hear you say, but it only becomes fair if the player with that 100% win rate has actually completed enough battles to warrant that win rate, and that they also have the required tanks to actually play the damn game especially the tour. Now what we've seen over the last few tours, which I must add is perfectly within the rules, it's not illegal, is teams beginning to understand that when you put forward 10 players, Wargaming discount your three lowest players in order to calculate your overall average seeding win rate. Thus, Teams would field, say, two players with 100% win rates with no intention of those players actually playing. And then they would field, say, two players with 55% win rate who would play. The 55% win rate players will be discounted with regards to seeding and the 100% win rate players, their accounts used to calculate the average win rate of the team. Now, clearly, this is unfair and it's a manipulation of the system, despite it being perfectly legal and within the rules. And many of the tour players were, to say the least, up in arms over it. It was demanded by all in sundry across all the servers that Wargaming therefore find a way to eliminate the advantage gained by using 100% win rate accounts. And, despite it taking some time to come around, Wargaming have kind of found a solution that they intend to implement with update 8.2. The system that Wargaming have come up with is that it will now take into account the amount of battles the player has fought in regular battles in a vehicle of the tournament tier. Well, it's mostly tier 10, of course. Now, it's important to note this. Firstly, it's the battles in regular. So ratings, tours, and all other battles are not counted, only regular battles. And initially, it will be in the tier. So most big tours are tier 10, with the exception of summer season last year, which was tier eight. Strange, but true. Now, that means there needs to be a minimum amount of battles that the player must have played in regular mode for their win rate to be counted fully. And Wargaming have currently set that amount to 1,000 battles in a tank in the tier for the tour in regular battles. That doesn't mean that players with less than a thousand battles in say tier 10 can't play or won't have their win rate contribute. Far from it actually. What will happen now is that the player who doesn't meet the 1k tier requirement will then have battles taken from the next lowest tier, tier 9, to effectively top up. If they're not enough in tier 9 it goes to tier 8 and downwards and downwards. And they will use those battles to top up to the 1k. However, a forfeit will be applied 
And at the moment of doing this, I have no idea what that forfeit actually is. Most likely it's going to be a percentage reduction of something like 5% per tier or something similar. Like, I don't know, they may say, well, it's tier 9, so you won't, you've lost 25% of your battles. Tier 8, you've lost 50% of your battles. And so on and so on as they go down the tiers. You get the idea. But what about if you've never played 1,000 battles in total across all the tiers? Does this mean you can't play in tours either? Again, the answer to that is a big resounding no. No one is being prevented from taking part in any tour. But those who do not have the required 1,000 battles in total across all their tiers will have the difference with what they've actually played topped up to that of 1k. So if you've played, say, I don't know, 500 battles and you've got an 80% win rate across that's the total battles, then Wargaming will add another 500 battles, but there will always be losses. And therefore your win rate will be adjusted to that of 40% for seeding purposes and the calculation of the average win rate for the team. Now, many people are going to say this is unfair, but no, not really. I mean, I myself, after like 30 odd battles on my RU account, I have a 100% win rate. And I could indeed be drafted into a team despite having no tier 10 on the account. I mean, I could go out and buy a Mark 6, for example, in order to boost the overall win rate. Now, if the team wishes me to actually play, then that's up to them and they need to realize that my win rate will now be adjusted to give a fairer representation of my skill over a given period of time. Furthermore, we must all remember that for the first 100 battles, new players face bots. So getting a high win rate if you're a reroll isn't as tricky as you would think. The thing about the 100% win rate issue is that it needed to be addressed and urgently by Wargaming. And whilst it came around somewhat later than expected, at least it's finally come. However, many are still not happy about the situation. Some feel that it doesn't go far enough because rerolls will still gain a good win rate in the 1k battle limit. Nevertheless, the initial calculation is based on 1k battles in the tour tier, for example, tier 10, not just rolling around in tiers 1 to 4. And if someone has an 80% win rate after a thousand battles in tier 10, then fair play to them, I say. Now, I'm not saying that the system is perfect. Clearly, no system is or ever will be. But we have to give credit where credit is due, even though it's late. Wargaming were given a task, and yes, it took longer than we wanted, but we finally got something that is fair, workable, and does what almost everybody wanted. It removes the mischief caused by the 100% win rate manipulations. It is still to be seen if the introduction of this will resolve the issue, because like most professional sports, there will always be very clever people out there looking for the next loophole in order to gain that ever so slight advantage. Either way, I'm looking forward to the autumn season and maybe, just maybe, this new seeding system will bring a little bit of stability to the tool scene. Anyway, I've been Fujit. It's been my quick video on the current win rate, uh, win rate seeding system. By all means, comment and everything below. And guys, until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.